Jesus, the apostles, the prophets, and the saints of old prayed with faith and confidence. What if you could have Jesus as a tutor to teach you exactly how you should pray? Jesus did exactly that, and we are going to talk about it today. Prayer is talking to God as his own child, with intention and with purpose according to his word. A life full of prayer is a life full of joy, more hope, greater peace, a greater sense of comfort, a nearness of God's presence, a clear, excuse me, a clearer sense of your identity, a deeper sense of your value, a stronger sense of purpose, direction, love for your life, and really just being close to the presence of God. It's really, it's not accidental. This is something that takes purpose. This is something that takes um, conscious thought. You have to pay attention to what God says in the Bible. We see the framework that Jesus gives us in Matthew 6. Now, as we look at this, we see that Christ rebuked and rejected the false and useless prayers that they were praying. And I'm going to link to that at the end of this video because I did a previous video on it. It's three ways Jesus said not to pray. Again, I'll have it linked at the end. It's pretty interesting. You might want to check it out. Starting in verse nine, though, we see a short form of what Jesus says to pray. And he gives it to us in such a short form that really we can't say that we don't know how to pray or don't know what to pray because this is something that we can memorize. We can memorize these exact words and then we can replace some of the words with our own um, experiences and the things that we have going on that we need to talk to God about. So I encourage you to pray the Lord's Prayer every day and put yourself in that prayer because this is a good way to have all of the earthly wants and needs that you face leading you to prayer. There are reminders all around you every single day. And this is the best prayer ever. I mean, if Jesus prayed it, do you really think that another one is going to compare? The very first words in this prayer, let's take a look at them. Our Father. So what does that mean exactly? Well, I'm going to tell you that sometimes the simplest answer is the best answer. He just says, come unto me like a little child. Say, our father, God, like your dad, just come unto him with the respect of a child asking a parent for a thing and have the faith that he is going to give you what you need. It says in the Bible that um, you as heathens know what to give your children. You're not going to give them a stone when they ask for bread. He goes on and on in that. He says, how much more does your father in heaven know? So because he's our father, we want to honor him and we want to make sure that his name is respected everywhere. This is where we see this holy is your name. This is where we cut ties with the curse of the garden and we rely on the Holy Ghost. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. This is relying on the Holy Ghost, not going to live by the curse of the law that they were bound to because of the the curse that happened in the garden. We're cutting ties with that. We're relying on the Holy Ghost and we're saying, not my will, God, but your will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth. Not my will anymore. Not the curse that comes through me doing what I want, but the blessing that comes from following what you want for me. Because what he thinks and advises, really, that's what we need to succeed despite all the plans and the schemes of the world and anything that might try to go against this will and advice. 
Even if the whole world comes together and fights for its own cause, we want God's will to be done here on the earth. We are God's restraining force. Now, next we have, give us this day our daily bread. These are the everyday needs because Jesus was flesh too. He understands the needs that we go through, the need to drink water, the need to eat food, the need to go to sleep. He understands those things that we are going through. So we see this, give us this day our daily bread. Our simple needs like food, health, shelter, this should get you to be ticked off at some points if those baseline things prevent you from preaching the gospel, if your health is affected, if your shelter is affected, or your food, it should tick you off and send you into intercession because this this verse here, give us this day our daily bread, this is something that we are, um, it's, it reminds me of when he says, when you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray earlier in Matthew 6, this says, give us this day. It's not, it's not a, will you please it's give it to us. It's an expectation of this. So we know that God is a good God and all good things come from him. So if we're not getting it, we know that that's a, something that the devil is coming against and we should go into intercession and a warfare against that. Next, we see forgive us and help us to forgive others. So this is something that we look towards ourselves. We look inward and we say, okay, God, is there anything that I need to clear out on my own? And is there anyone that I need to forgive? There are so many things that are just laid out here for us in such a short time, we are able to put all of our, our physical and all of our spiritual needs on God, all, all on his chest. And in just a few words, we gather up a world of meaning. It's such a beautiful prayer. And prayer has an immense amount of power. And let me tell you, there is no more perfect prayer than the one that Jesus prayed. Prayer is how God gives us power. You just speaking your words willy-nilly and just going off, it, it's not going to have the same effect as what God told you to speak because that's his power coming through you here on earth. Don't miss out on that because God has a plan for you. He has the most ideal life you could possibly, you probably can't even imagine the life that he has planned for you. And you're not likely to experience the fullness of God's will for your life without prayer. So focus on eternal rewards. Prayer has an eternal reward and you will live forever somewhere. Hell is hot, heaven is real, and eternity is long, and we don't have time to waste. We simply do not have time to waste. We have a very, very short period of time when you look at it in light of eternity, because you will spend forever either in heaven or in hell, and if you are spending it on prayer, you are spending it on an eternal thing. Any work that you do, any money that you gain, any notoriety that you gain here on the earth, that's temporal. But prayer is an eternal thing. And we see in the Gospels, he says, what would a man give in exchange for his own soul? This time that you spend with God, this intimate time, that is going to go on into eternity. Prayer is an eternal thing. It focuses on eternity. And I want to tell you that the spirit of an intercessor is one that is fierce. This isn't something that's some mamby-pamby thing. When you go into prayer, don't cower in the face of the enemy's schemes and strategies. Give us this day our daily bread. And if you're not having that and seeing that manifestation, then you clearly defend it fiercely because that is a promise to you straight from God. Intercessors, intercessors are actually 
energized by the onslaught of anything because really it's their chance to bring God's light into the darkness and to dispel it for the sake of Christ. It's your chance to come before your father. We saw that at the beginning. Our father. It's daddy God, I've got this issue going on right now and I'm going to need your help. Holy Ghost, come in and lead me and guide me so that your kingdom may come. Your will may be done here on the earth as it is in heaven. Pray this prayer daily. We're going to pray it right now. Ready? God, I come to you as your daughter and I thank you that heaven and an eternity with you are my reward. Holy is your name. I will partner with you to be sure that your will is done here on the earth as it is in heaven. And I thank you that health, wealth, and wisdom are my daily bread. I thank you for forgiving me and showing me how I should forgive others. God, I thank you for leading me to good things and delivering me from evil things. Yours is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen.